Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Yasser Rafat from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Aligarh Muslim University. I'm associated with Sustainable Energy and Acoustics Research Lab. And the topic for today's uh, uh, discussion here, talk here, is Architectural Acoustics, Heritage, Conservation and Sustainable Practices. We are going to talk about uh, what do we mean by heritage, what are the different processes of uh, conservation currently used, and how architectural acoustics, the concept of architectural acoustics, can help in conservation of our heritage. Let me start with the definition of heritage and ancient monument. What do we mean by that? As per the Archaeological Survey of India, ancient monument means any structure, erection, monument, or any cave or building which is of historical, archaeological, or artistic interest. And it should be in existence for not less than 100 years. It may include remains of an ancient monument, site of an ancient monument, such portion of land adjoining the site of an ancient monument, or the mean of access to and convenient inspection of an ancient monument. So this is what we mean by a heritage or ancient uh, monument. There are different acts and legal framework available in India for the protection of heritage. There is this act of uh, 1878 and then the Ancient Monument Preservation Act of 1904, the Ancient Monument and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act of 1958 and uh, slightly recently the Ancient Monument and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act of 2010. 2010. There are uh, government agencies which are involved in the preservation of heritage in India. For example, Archaeological Survey of India, it was founded in 1861 and presently it is under the Ministry of Culture. It helps in preservation of physical and tangible heritage accumulated in ancient monuments. It also regulates the archaeological activities as per the Act of 1958 and it prevents illegal export of Indian antiquities. Then we have National Monument Authority. It is also set up uh, under the Ministry of Culture as per the provisions of uh, Act of 2010. It functions in protection and preservation of monuments and sites through management of prohibited area. And it also grants permission to applicants for construction related activity in the prohibited and regulated areas. Now, why do we need conservation? The heritage buildings are actually historical records that reflect individual identity and experiences. They reflect the diversity of our communities. They tell us who we are and the past that has formed us. It provides a sense of connection to community and landscape, a sense of connection to the past and to the lived experiences. These places of cultural significance must be preserved for present and future generations. Now the process of conservation uh, is manifold. Conservation can be done uh, of heritage building through preservation, through restoration, reconstruction, adaptive use, rehabilitation. Now all of these processes mainly deal with the preservation of the structure of the monument and preservation of the visual aspects of the monument. What we are saying here is that along with that we need to preserve the acoustics of our heritage also the acoustical aspects of our heritage also just like we are preserving the visual aspects of our uh, heritage we need to conserve and preserve the oral aspects of our conservation and this is the topic uh, for today's uh, main discussion now preservation what I would do is that I would go through each of the processes of conservation through example. And let me take the example of one of the heritage building which is existing uh, at uh, Aligarh University. It's a mosque which was built in 1915. And the preservation is actually maintaining the fabric of a place to its existing state and retarding deterioration. The facade of the building which is in front of you 
is actually made of red sandstone and to preserve that stone a transparent coating was applied to it of a chemical which would prevent the aging and deterioration of the sandstone. Next process is restoration and restoration means returning the existing fabric to a known earlier state by removing accretion by reassembling components without introduction of new material. Now again you see the entrance gate of the very building which I showed you before and you would see both pictures before and after pictures. Now what happened is that it was an exposed brick structure which during the years uh, there were different paints applied to it and uh, different coatings of paints were on top of it and during the restoration process all those layers of paints were removed and now it is again in the same uh, uh, way as it was before when it was originally built in the exposed brick uh, format. Another process is reconstruction. Reconstruction means returning a place to a known earlier state by introducing a new material. Now we are looking at the interior of the same building, uh, the before and after images. The white walls which you are seeing, the white is actually a Reich plaster. So a new type of a Reich plaster which was very much similar to the one before was used and that was applied uh, on the walls. Uh, the paints which were used before, now the paints now were changed and uh, in the before image you would see uh, that the bottom half of the wall uh, was green in color and now afterwards uh, a brown color and PVC, uh, PVC uh, wall was applied to it. Another process of uh, conservation is adaptive reuse. In front of you is a building. It is uh, again a heritage building which was built in 1912 and it is known as Vilayat Manzil. Adaptive reuse means modifying a place to suit existing use. Now initially this was a place of residence and afterwards it was changed into a department of education. So there are educational activities happening here. Students come and they have classes here. There are offices in this building. And this adaptive reuse is done so that the maintenance and conservation of building can happen. Up till now, all the processes I discussed, they were related to preservation and conservation of the structure of the building, of uh, uh, the visual aspect of the building, how it used to look and preserving it sometimes back to the way it was originally and sometimes through adaptive reuse, uh, conserving and, uh, and, 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 and saving it from further deterioration. Now let's talk about why do we need conservation of acoustical aspects. It is most neglected but it is a, a required aspect which we need to conserve. And we also need to understand that in those uh, uh, heritage buildings, there are different architectural elements. What was the oral purpose? What was the acoustical purpose of those architectural elements? We do look at those beautiful pillars and those beautiful carvings, uh, beautiful domes and minars, and we look at their visual beauty. But did they have any uh, visual, uh, uh, besides their visual function, did they have any oral function or not? The second thing is, during the course of uh, restoration and renovation along the way, was the oral aspect, the acoustical aspect of this heritage building preserved or not? What was the acoustical nature of the building when it was made? And uh, is that the same now or uh, it is no more preserved? So we need to maintain the oral history of our heritage buildings also. So for example, just think of a, a building, a heritage building, which was, uh, let's say, used for a very different purpose uh, in earlier times, but now it is changed into a museum. Uh, it is changed into something different. 
so maybe uh, the structural aspect of the building is preserved and uh, it is a possibility that a few more modifications are done to it to suit it to the new purpose of the building earlier it was uh, used let's say for the gathering of people uh, and afterwards it is changed into a museum so now when it is changed into a museum uh, the, the, uh, maybe uh, air conditioning is applied to it or maybe uh, sound reinforcement is applied to it now after this renovation and after this uh, conservation is the acoustical aspect conserved or not so we need to do that and that's why i'm saying uh, and we are uh, uh, putting this point forward that we need to conserve the acoustical aspect of our heritage buildings also now let's talk about the current practices what's happening now now the current practices they do not focus on the oral aspect now what happens is that many a times internal geometry and material conservation is slightly complicated for example the earlier the floor was of a different material and now a new floor needs to be put out laid out the new floor uh, is laid out of a different material or maybe a new floor is laid out on the existing floor and now the overall volume of the building is changed maybe the material with which the building was made before is different let's talk about uh, the, uh, the rock cut cave temples it is made of rock and during the process of conservation maybe uh, for conserving a different material is applied although it uh, uh, helped in preserving the structure of the building it might help in preserving uh, the visual aspect of the building but we need to be sure that did it preserve the oral aspect the acoustical aspect of the buildings or not so we need to uh, think about that also there were many ancient monuments like king's courts where there were huge volumes and uh, earlier when they were there uh, there were no sound reinforcement at this point we can talk about uh, and we can think about uh, the red fort at uh, new delhi where uh, now there is a, a light and sound show so earlier there was no sound reinforcement sound reinforcement and now there is sound reinforcement so there is not much emphasis which is being uh, laid down currently uh, during the conservation practices on the oral aspect now the conservation of uh, oral acoustical aspect can be done through different ways one way is to maintain the original geometry and the material whatever was let's say the internal geometry the volume the area it should be maintained and uh, the material which was used it should be maintained but there is a chance that the original material is not available then if a new material is used then most care should be paid so that by applying new material uh, the acoustical nature is not changed just to give an example uh, earlier the floor was uh, let's say uh, just out of uh, uh, mud and afterwards if uh, glazed tiles are being put then uh, it then a study should be done to find out how much it is going to change uh, the uh, overall uh, acoustical aspect of the building so these are the things which need to be looked into and there is also a possibility that uh, uh, for conservation we need to change the geometry we need to change the material the older material is not available anymore or we are uh, doing an adaptive reuse the purpose of the building is changed if that's the case then there is still a way for the conservation of acoustical aspect and that is through digital archiving that is preserving the building in digital format just like we are preserving uh, the visual aspect of the building digitally we need to preserve uh, let us take an example of how these type of acoustical conservations are happening in different parts of the world for that i would take an example of bristol's constant halt in england it was uh, functional in 1936 and during the years uh, there were different uh, renovation projects happening in it and because of which different changes were made now these changes uh, were functional in nature uh, the visual aspect also changed but along with that uh, the acoustics of the hall also changed so an attempt was made recently to preserve all those uh, 
changes which were done visually and uh, the effect of it on the acoustical aspect. So a digital archive was made throughout and through this digital archive now the present and future generations can look at and can hear to how the hall was uh, through all these time. What different renovations were done and how all of these renovations affected the visual and the oral aspect of the building. I would take two cases here to show that how the conservation can affect the visual and the oral aspect of a building. The first case in front of you is for the conservation of uh, the interior and the exterior of the masjid. And you, you can see from the before and after images, the visual aspect was enhanced, uh, the structure was also maintained, and since the use was not changed, uh, it was the purpose of the building, the way it was meant to be, it is still the same. And because of that, uh, there was no big change uh, inside in the inside structure and uh, the oral aspect of the building didn't change much. Now, let's look at uh, another case. Again, a heritage building. It is uh, in Aliga Muslim University. And this building, uh, the foundation stone was laid on 8th January 1877 and its opening uh, ceremony was on 12th November 1894. This building is by the name of a stretchy hall. And earlier it used to be uh, a place uh, for the residence of students and afterwards it was changed and the purpose was changed uh, to hold different meetings and different uh, functions could be organized into it so the purpose of it was changed during the time of renovation uh, the complete uh, roof was replaced uh, air conditioning system was introduced and the false ceiling which was before was replaced now here you can see the before and after images of uh, the stretchy hall. Uh, as you can see that uh, afterwards there is a new ceiling. Uh, the seating uh, chairs are there for seating space. So if I would sum up all the changes and additions which are made to the stretchy hall. Because a new floor was laid out and uh, a new ceiling was made to accommodate uh, the uh, ducts of uh, air conditioning, the volume of uh, the hall changed. The geometry was also changed a bit. Earlier there used to be coupled balconies with the hall, but because of uh, uh, increased cooling load, and now the balconies were disconnected from the hall uh, through doors. Uh, the material was also changed in a way that the uh, earlier material for ceiling and roof was different and afterwards it was different purpose was also changed. It used to be a place of residence for students and afterwards it was changed to a place for uh, conducting meetings and uh, small uh, gatherings and uh, held, uh, holding conferences. There were few additions. Seating was an addition. Uh, sound reinforcement, sound systems were used for sound reinforcement and air conditioning uh, was introduced in the whole hall. Now, in its present way, uh, in its present form, uh, there was a decrease in ceiling height, there was an addition of a platform and uh, the chairs were added. Now because of this, although the visual aspect was enhanced and uh, because as per the new purpose, uh, there were new amenities like uh, uh, air conditioning were introduced, uh, sound system was introduced, but because of this conservation, uh, the acoustical aspect of the building changed. The way it used to be acoustically before, uh, that was uh, changed. So this is uh, one case where you can see that how during the conservation uh, process, although the visual aspect uh, uh, didn't change much, but the acoustical aspect changed a lot. So in such cases, there is a need for creating a digital archive. Now how to do that? Uh, one of the processes to do that is through software modeling with on-site validation. A software model is made, a 3D model of uh, the building is made, uh, all the materials uh, which are 
in the building and they are applied and uh, then uh, numerically uh, the acoustical properties of the building are assessed and this model is validated by taking uh, experimental data in the existing building and uh, once the software is uh, uh, the software model is behaving uh, and validated against uh, the existing condition of the building then we can predict the original performance of the building and if uh, we have a record of different changes which were made then we can apply those changes and we can see that how it changed uh, the acoustical aspect of the building and this would help us in preserving the behavior the acoustical behavior of all the changes which were made throughout the history of the building the different uh, instruments which are used for uh, measurement of acoustical parameters on the left hand side you would see the dodecahedron speaker uh, sound level meter microphones uh, data acquisition system and on the right hand side picture you would see the in situ absorption setup now in situ absorption setup is more tuned with these kind of applications because uh, using this setup we can go directly uh, in the building and uh, we can find uh, the values of the acoustical values of absorption of uh, the material as it is now digital archiving serves two purposes one is conservation and the other purpose which can uh, be achieved through this exercise is understanding the acoustical character uh, and acoustical characteristics of different architectural elements for example in a structure like this in front of you you would see that there are uh, domes and minars and uh, inside there are different other architectural elements what is the effect of those architectural element on the acoustics of the building and uh, uh, if during renovation those architectural elements uh, if changes are made to those architectural elements then at least uh, uh, their acoustical behavior can be preserved and we can also study and find out that how they affect the overall acoustics uh, of the heritage monument to this effect we uh, started a study and uh, what we did is uh, we wanted to see that what is the effect of uh, uh, the minars or tombs uh, and mihrabs, uh, another structure which is very commonly found in, uh, in, in, in these kind of buildings like uh, mosques and uh, tomb is uh, something uh, which is uh, easily found in, in temples and various other structures. To understand that, uh, we wanted to see that how each of these uh, uh, individual architectural elements affect. So we made a model uh, of uh, the main hall of the mosque and we kept the same uh, area of 6 meter by 6 meter and the ceiling height was also kept the same of uh, around 7 meter and with that we applied we used the same material as in the existing uh, structure and then we ran uh, simulation and we found out that with this cube shape uh, without having any tone uh, the clarity was only 0.08 dB and this is very low and the maximum speech transmission index was 0.62 uh, not very decent uh, we also did oralization and uh, for the purpose of oralization uh, the dry sound which was input to the software uh, you can hear to it now Sound. It's not just the air vibrating. Sound means feelings. It refreshes our minds, soothes our hearts. It can make us happy or sad or excited. It also is essential to the communication of ideas and the exchange of information. It's vital to daily life. Now let me uh, go back here and uh, say what we are doing by oralization. Just like visual visualization, you make a 3D model of a building and you do rendering, uh, visual rendering and of uh, different materials and you can see in the 3D model how it would look actually. Oralization is uh, just that kind of rendering but in, uh, uh, for, for the purpose of uh, acoustics. So this is the dry sound which was input to our uh, building model 
and uh, after convolution we got the oralization oralized uh, sound and now you can hear that uh, in the cube which we made how this sound actually behaves sound it's not just the air vibrating sound means feelings it refreshes our minds soothes our hearts it can make us happy or sad or excited it also is essential to the communication of ideas and the exchange of information it's vital to daily life if you can compare between these two uh, you know two two samples which you have just heard uh, the oralized sound it seems uh, it is less clear it seems as if it is coming from a farther distance and this is something which is shown in uh, uh, the value of clarity also for the next case we actually change the wall setting and now you can see that the walls are chamfered earlier it was the uh, cube and now you can see these uh, staggerings in the walls and this is as per the existing uh, structure of the main hall of the mosque uh, again uh, it uh, efforts were made to use the same volume for case 1 and case 2 and same material for case 1 and case 2 so so the only difference between case 1 and case 2 here is that uh, uh, the walls are chamfered just because of this the clarity increased and it is now so the clarity is now 7.38 db a big big increase from the case of a simple q and the speech transmission index also increased and this effect can be uh, very well seen here uh, if you would remember the previous uh, sample which you heard it was muffled it was as if the sound was coming from before and now after oralization uh, at the same location, you can uh, hear now that how uh, the oralized sound in this chamfered wall uh, hears like. Sound. It's not just the air vibrating. Sound means feelings. It refreshes our minds, soothes our hearts. It can make us happy or sad or excited. It also is essential to the communication of ideas and the exchange of information. It's vital to daily life. So here you can uh, feel the big difference between the previous uh, oralized sample and the oralized sample now. So what we are suggesting and uh, what we found out here that just by chamfering of the wall, it completely changed the acoustical uh, uh, characteristic of the building. As a next step, what we did was addition of dome uh, on top of the chamfered building. And what we found out that the clarity still increases a bit from before although not such a big jump in clarity but still there is a increment in clarity and increment in speech transmission index and the oralized sound now you can hear to it although uh, the numbers show a difference and increment but in hearing uh, it's a very subtle difference now sound it's not just the air vibrating sound means feelings it refreshes our minds soothes our hearts it can make us happy or sad or excited it also is essential to the communication of ideas and the exchange of information it's vital to daily life so through this uh, uh, through this uh, work of ours uh, what we found out is that digital archiving uh, serves these two purposes the first purpose is uh, that we can conserve the acoustical aspect throughout the renovation process throughout the history of uh, uh, the building and we can take informed decisions if we want to do renovations or restorations uh, in future we can take informed decisions in changing uh, the material and if we are going to change uh, uh, the geometry of uh, the heritage building so a better informed decision can be made where uh, the inputs of uh, uh, acoustical aspects can also be taken into consideration the second aspect is that we can analyze our existing heritage buildings and try to find out that uh, was there any uh, acoustical functionality of the architectural elements uh, in our heritage building or not and how much they were contributing individually to the overall acoustical aspect or the overall acoustical nature of the building 
I mean, there are two examples uh, which I can put in front of you. One is of uh, uh, the temple of Akshardham in New Delhi. Uh, it's very rich in terms of uh, architectural elements. There are macro architectural elements uh, like domes, like pillars. And then there are uh, micro architectural elements like all those intricate carvings. What is the effect of all of those? Uh, on the overall acoustical uh, uh, feeling of the uh, 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 overall acoustical environment, this is something which we can understand through such kind of studies and we can preserve them. If there is renovation going on uh, throughout uh, the history of the building, then we can at least digitally archive that how the building used to be uh, visually and acoustically also. What was the acoustical nature of the building when it was made and throughout those renovation, how was this uh, acoustical nature was, was preserved or it was changed. So this is the kind of uh, uh, recommendations which we are coming with that uh, in terms of architectural acoustics, this field of archaeoacoustics can help us in preserving our heritage building and in making a digital archive of our heritage. Thanks a lot, everyone.